Just a couple minutes if you guys are just joining us. I realized that I said something about the chat, but you can't see the links yet, so don't worry. I'm going to send the links. Once we get a few more people on, I will send you guys some resources that you guys can look at for after this session. So just bear with us a couple more minutes while we let the rest of our group join, and then we'll get started. If you guys are just joining us, I know there's a lot more people jumping on. You're not supposed to hear anything yet, so your audio is not, um, not working. It's working. We are just waiting for a few more minutes for our team over in Bolivia to jump on, and then we'll get started. Um, I have muted all of you guys, so not trying to be mean. We're just trying to keep it quiet for them to be able to talk, and then we'll go ahead and unmute you guys if you have any questions. So, Brittany, if everyone's ready, we can, we can okay. start. Okay. Perfect. Hi everyone, I am Brittany Labby. I am an engagement coordinator over at the WSU Alumni Association. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. We have a really big team of people here and I'm really excited to have this opportunity to take you guys to Bolivia. Uh, so just a couple of notes for Zoom etiquette. I have muted you guys already right now, but you are able to unmute yourself. So if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to unmute yourself. We are also recording this just for our people that aren't able to attend. We can send them a link and they can also join us in Bolivia. Um, I also, if you guys are having any bandwidth issues throughout this whole, this whole event, then please feel free to take yourself off of video. Sometimes that helps with the bandwidth issues. Um, it is live, so there may be some wind, there may be some other elements that are just part of the, the experience and the trip. So just bear with us with some of those things. Also, I will add some chat or some links in the chat for our WCU Alumni Association if you're interested in becoming a member or if you guys are interested in other future virtual opportunities that we will offer. And also, um, this is just a great experience for our travel and tourism in Bolivia. They are struggling due to the pandemic. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of other people that are struggling, struggling as well, but we want to be able to provide support for them. So I will also put a link for their website if you guys are interested in utilizing this as an opportunity for your other work or for friends, um, please feel free to go ahead and book them for your next event and have a llama join you guys as well. But with that, I will pass it off to our WSU alum, Darren. Hi guys, no need to respond. I assume you're all here and listening. Yeah, my name is Darren. Um, and as Brittany said, I am a WSU alum. I'm actually a Pullmanite as well. So go, go Cougs, go Hounds. Um, but yeah, I'm far away from Bolivia, uh, or sorry, far away from uh, Pullman uh, now. Um, and I have been for the last 12 years, I've been living in, in Bolivia here in South America. Um, and I've, I've been working in tourism here. Um, and we do some amazing, amazing stuff here. I've worked from, you know, with people from all over the world, from backpackers to Hollywood stars and actual princes and princesses. Uh, and one of the most, uh, one of my favorite things that we do with everyone is the simple llama walk. So that's what we're going to do today, guys. We're going to go and visit two different places. Um, and we're going to uh, see uh, how influential the llama has been to life and culture here in Bolivia. And as well, we're going to take in the amazing views of these incredible destinations. So thanks for joining us. Um, we'll get started soon. I'm going to share my screen so that we can kind of see where in the world we're going. So um, there we go. Can everyone see my screen, I assume? We're looking at Washington State University. Yeah, where we all once went to school. Some of us a long time ago, some of us not so long ago. But uh, this is uh, Washington State. And from here, we're going to travel down to where I call home now, which is Bolivia. And as you guys probably already know, Bolivia is in South America. 
So we're going to go all the way down to South America. And what I think a lot of people think of when they think of Bolivia is the Altiplano, the high highlands, right? The mountains. But as you can see, all this green, well, that's the Amazon. And so actually most of Bolivia is in the Amazon. Where we're going to visit today, though, is in the uh, mountains. And you can see this white bit here. And one of the reasons that we're starting so high is so that you can see just how big, in fact, it is. Um, and so this is uh, the salt flats. They're called the Uyuni salt flats. And all of this white, all of that white, which is about the size of New Jersey, the state of New Jersey, that's all salt. And what happens with it, this used to be uh, a giant lake, and that lake dried out, and all the sediment, the salt sediment stayed. And so this is all salt. Uh, and it's really an amazing, amazing place to come and visit. Uh, during the dry season, it's this just field of white. Um, and during the wet season, it becomes uh, covered in, in, in water. Um, but one of my favorite things to see, I'm sorry, it's, 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 it's slow, we got a lot of people on. One of my favorite things to see uh, at the salt flats, and you can see, this is, this is the salt flats, staying on the salt flats. One of my favorite things to see in the salt flats are the stars. Uh, as you can see, uh, the stars here, one of the really cool things about the stars here is that the, in the Andean Cosmovision, uh, the constellations are actually different. Uh, we see the same uh, constellations, uh, like we see I Ides, uh, Aries, for example, right? But Aries here, instead of seeing Aries, we see a tree, Gemini. Instead of seeing Gemini, we see uh, two uh, uh, cougars, actually, two pumas. Uh, so it's really, really, really cool. Um, and actually, you can see these dark clouds in the Milky Way, right, which actually here uh, they call uh, the river of light. So in these dark clouds like this here, and I, I assume everyone can see my, my pointer, that you can see it's kind of, it's got a long neck, it's got a face, it's got legs. It's a llama. They actually see llamas in the stars here. That's how important they are to our, our livelihood. Um, and this one, uh, the, she, she comes out from, from here in October. And when she comes out, uh, she brings the rain with her. Uh, and so we are actually uh, going into, an, into rainy season in November, December, and, and January, up to, up to February. And that's when the, the Lama constellation is above us and she brings the rain. So she's very, very important, obviously, to everyone here in the Altiplano. So we'll go and visit. Uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly where we're gonna go. We're gonna go to the north here at a place called Tahua. This is a small village, a typical village here in Bolivia, just underneath the shade of this giant volcano. This is an extinct volcano called Tunupa. Uh, and there in Tahua, we have our friend Eti. So this is the view she has just of, of the salt flats out, out behind her. So I'm gonna show you guys quickly. Can everyone see uh, the, the images on um, Zoom? Or do you just see the map? Just the map? Okay. If you go, if you click on, um, I'm going to stop sharing. So now you can see everyone. Find Eti Ramos. Hola, Eti. And on the, top, on the top of her, on her screen, you'll see three dots. If you click on those three dots and you go down, you see pin video. Click on pin video and then you'll see her big. Yeah, she's going to be showing us the beautiful views and that's a lot more uh, beautiful than, than seeing me. So, yeah, so now you can see her, right? So her name is Eti. You can see she's quite windy today out there. Uh, and she actually speaks the pre-Incan language called Aymara. And in Aymara, does anyone know how in Spanish to say, how are you? No? Como estas? But in, but in Aymara, what we say is, what we say is kamisaki. So on the count of three, if you want, we can try and speak this ancient uh, indigenous language and together shout Kamisaki, right? One, two, Kamisaki. Oh my God, did you hear that? Look at her. Oh my God. Twin. <laughs> Was this suggested? Yeah. Well, she, unfortunately, I think she's... We'll try and can you can you move you her, Brittany, so that we can uh, hear. But what's important is the view. Yeah. So you can see the view. You see that white in the distance there? Uh Eti, nos puede mostrar por favor uh, el salar? So that white in the distance, that's the difference. you can see you can't see the other side. It's it's huge. It's 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 fast. Mm -hmm. 
It's an amazing, amazing expanse. It's the world's largest salt flats. Um, and when you're out there, you, as you can't see the horizon, you can take some amazing, amazing pictures. Uh, and it is the dry season now, so it is all white. It's not covered in water. During the rainy season, it will all get covered in water. Um, so it'll become this massive salt lake, uh, but it's only a thin layer of water, so you can actually walk out there. Uh, and it is an amazing, amazing place. One of my favorite destinations in the entire world. Um, and you can see what they're building, the, the, the wall there, very traditional way to look. Eti nos puede mostrar tu nupa? I'm asking her to show us the, the volcano. So that's Tanupa volcano, the extinct volcano. And the local tradition says that actually, that actually the volcano is what created um, the salt flat. Here, the, the Aymaran people believe that these volcanoes and these mountains, uh, they actually still interact with, with uh, people. Um, and this uh, volcano had a child. Uh, the child died, so she cried. And when she cried, it made this vast lake that then dried out and the tears left the salt. Um, so really interesting. But the reason we're here uh, beyond seeing this place is also to see the amazing llamas. A couple really important things that I want to go over real quick. One is if, if you can see me, you also you want to make sure you get your llama fingers out. So if you do, if you do like uh, rock and roll fingers and you stick out the nose, you can get llama fingers, right? So you want to make sure when you go and visit a llama, you got your llama fingers ready. You can do, you know, one llama, two llama, llama love, extreme llama. So you can see she's, she's got the, the llamas out and she's got about 80 llamas in total. Um, and they are amazing, amazing creatures. Uh, she's told me even that uh, llamas have a favorite musician. Can anyone guess what the llama's favorite musician is? Any guesses? Llama's favorite musician. The llama's favorite musician is Wolfgang Lamadeus Mozart. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it was a bad dad joke. I'm about to be a father, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a couple of bad dad jokes uh, throughout the day. Uh, I apologize in advance, uh, but I hope you uh, I hope you enjoy them. And if you don't, give me a sympathy laugh. I appreciate that. I'll take it. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, they're amazing, amazing creatures. Um, and like I said, she's got about 80 animals in her in her. Um, uh, herd. Um, and these, these animals, uh, they used to um, take the salt from the salt flats and bring them all over the Andean mountains. Um, and so they, they, they are used for as pack animals. Um, and you can see they're quite furry, big, beautiful animals. Um, and does anyone know how to say what's your name in Spanish? Como se llama? Very good. Yes. Really good guys. Yes, exactly. Como se llama? And so you heard the word llama, right? I'll say llama um, uh, because that's how we say it in Spanish. Uh, in English, it's llama, but with the two L's, it's llama. It comes out. And the story goes that when the Spanish came, oh look at the baby. The babies are called crías here. That's a that's a baby. Those those babies will only be uh, like a month old. Um, so yeah, sorry. So the, when the Spanish came, they had never seen creatures like this before. Obviously, they called them kind of a mix between a horse and a sheep. Um, and so they asked the indigenous people, what's the llama called? Uh, what or como se llama, right? Como se llama? And the indigenous people didn't speak Spanish, obviously. So they just responded, llama, what's this guy saying? Llama? And that's how the name came. That's what people say. The, the, the llama came because the indigenous people just responded llama. Um, but the truth is, it's just like puma or condor. It's a name that comes from the indigenous language, the Aymara language. Um, and it's one that's stuck everywhere, uh, all over the world. So the baby llamas, they're, they're, they will be uh, in their mother's womb for almost a full year, kind of like horses. Um, and they'll give birth when, well, while standing. Um, and when they hit the ground, um, it actually wakes them up. It clears their lungs, um, their airways. Uh, and within five minutes, the babies are, are already standing um, and doing uh, and moving around, walking around with the herd. Um, and um, they're, they'll live to be about 50, 15 to 25 years old. Um, and you can see on some of them, this one doesn't. Um, Eti, puedes mostrar uh, la princesa? So she's got, she hasn't named all of her llamas, but she does have named a couple of them. And her favorite llama is, is princesa. So she's bringing us over to, to say hi to princesa. Uh, you'll notice in, in their ears and some of them, they have these tassels. Um, and that helps identify which family the llama belongs to. Sometimes they'll leave the herd and join another herd, another family's herd. 
Um, and when they do that, um, um, they don't want to get lost. So, so they have colorful tassels in their ears. And those tassels show you which llama uh, belongs to which family. Oh, she's trying to climb that wall, poor girl. Um, yeah, so they're also very intelligent and curious animals. Um, and they, uh, Brittany, can you unmute Eddie, please? And they, um, they will learn simple tasks. They can also learn their name. Esto es la, la princesa. Se puede acercar un poco más. So they, so they're bringing the princess. Right, we're going to see if princess can hear us. Right, so uh, if she gets a bit closer. We'll try to shout her name. There's Princessa. So on the count of three, everyone, uh, we're, we're going to unmute you quickly. On the count of three, everyone, we can yell Princessa. ¿Se puede mostrar, uh, Eti? Ahí está. Le muestro la Princessa sin mover por Ahí estamos. Yeah. On the count of three, guys, everyone yell Princessa. One, two, three. Princessa! <laughs> she pulled her. She pulled her. Oh, there we go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's Princessa. Obviously, it's a female, means princess. And you can see there's that, there's that tassel that I was talking about in her ear, right? And that one, that one's, that is the color that, that uh, Eti's um, uh, llamas will have. And they only put them in when they're older. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the, the way they identify uh, who the llamas are. Um, and so a full-size llama will weigh between 290 to 440 pounds. Um, so they're quite big animals. They get up; to, they're about six feet tall uh, when they're fully sized. Um, and you definitely don't want to get between uh, caught between a couple uh, two llamas. Uh, in fact, what do you call it when you get caught between two llamas? You get laminated. <laughs> I make myself laugh. That's the important part, right? Yes, so you get laminated. Um, yeah, they're big animals. Um, and that, that's actually, they're, they're much bigger than alpacas. I'm sure you guys have heard of alpacas. Alpacas are smaller. They were raised to be uh, used for their uh, fur. Um, and so the llamas were actually raised to for mostly for transport. Um, and you can see, uh, you saw earlier Princessa, she pulled her ears back. So they are quite social animals and they actually communicate to each other uh, does anyone know the sound a llama makes? A cow says moo, uh, a rooster says cockers will do. In Spanish, a rooster says arikiriki. Uh, but uh, a llama actually makes a humming sound. Uh, the sound that they make is it's like it's a hum. Uh, so it's really a unique sound. And each of them has a unique sound that they, that they make. Um, and that's how they communicate with each other. And actually the mother and uh, the baby uh, llamas, they communicate to each other that first half hour. They're, all, they're constantly humming to each other. Uh, and that's how they learn each other's voices. Um, so it's really, really unique. Um, yeah, but you can see also that they'll pull their ears back sometimes. Uh, and when they pull their ears back, oh, there's one with their ears back, right? When they pull their ears back, uh, that often means, hey, uh, I, don't, I don't want you in my space. They're territorial animals. Um, so you'll see they'll stand next to each other, but they're not often touching each other. They don't really like to, to, to be in too much contact. Um, and so, yeah, they'll pull their ears back. And when they do that, it means, uh, you know, hey, stay away. You don't want to get too close to me. Um, and if you do, everyone knows what happens when a llama gets angry. Spit. Yes, very good. Yeah, they, they are known for spitting. It's not that common uh, that they'll spit, um, uh, especially at a, at a person. Uh, Eddie, obviously she's with them all the time, um, but so they're probably not gonna spit at her. Um, but uh, when they do get a bit aggressive, uh, their first line of defense is often, uh, first pull their ears back, pull their head back. And if you don't back off, then they will, they will start, they may spit. Um, and I'm just gonna ask Eddie. Uh, Eddie, hay uh, una cría por allá, por favor? So I'm gonna ask her to try and find one of the babies. Uh, the babies were just born in the last uh, month or two uh, and they're really, really, really cute. So we'll try and get her to have a, a look at a couple of them. So yeah, the llamas were, were um, 
uh, domesticated for transport mostly. Um, and they've, they're highly developed for that. They can carry 20% of their body weight uh, for around 20 miles a day uh, through the rough terrain of the Andes. Um, and they can actually get quite fast as well. Uh, at full trot, they can reach uh, up to 35 miles an hour. Um, so uh, they're, they're, they're not as, as, as slow as they may look. Uh, they, can, they, can, they can get pretty fast. Um, in fact, what would you call uh, a really fast llama? Another dad joke. No, nothing? You can call it a llamaha. Yeah, Yamaha, Lamaha, or a Lama, Lamagini, Lamborghini. Yeah, that one's not that good, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, they, the llamas only need about 5 to 10% of the food uh, that mules or horses need. Um, and so that helps them to live in these places. You can see where, where Eddie lives. There's not a lot of green, um, so, so they eat this dried grass. Um, and there's not a lot of it in a lot of places. Um, and so uh, because, of, because they only eat need five to ten percent of what mules or horses need they're able to live in some of the harshest conditions uh, in the entire andes um, and what that means is that then people that raise llamas can also live in these amazing destinations um, and yeah without the llamas eti and, and everyone in her in her village uh, may not be able to live where she lives um, because it is one of the main sources of of income farming herding llamas and of course Tourism. And that's what Eddie does as well. She takes people on these walks like we're doing now virtually. Uh, she does this on a regular basis. Let me, uh, Brittany, can you just um, unmute uh, Eddie, please? Eddie, nos escuchas? Sí. Se cortó, la, se cortó la, el video. Ya está. Nos muestra, por favor, las llamitas. ¿A ver, sí? Sí. Has anyone seen in the news recently um, how uh, llamas are helping us in our fight against COVID, against coronavirus? Maybe not, but they, what they're doing is they're, they, they've actually studied the llamas because llamas have two antibodies. One of the antibodies is much smaller, um, and you can see the baby, the white one. Uh, the, the, one of the antibodies in the llamas is much smaller than the human antibodies. Humans only have one antibody. And that smaller antibody, uh, scientists believe, may be able to attach itself uh, to the virus better and uh, block it. Um, and so they've been studying it with some success, obviously, uh, obviously trying to get, and that's how they'll sleep, lay down like that. That's not, they're not like horses where they sleep standing up. They, they sleep laying down like the baby just laid down. Um, and so they'll, they'll, they'll uh, scientists think that we may be able to introduce uh, the smaller llama antibody into humans and help us uh, in this way fight uh, the um, coronavirus, which is really, really amazing. Um, does anyone have any quick questions about uh, where Eddie lives or, or llamas before we go on and visit another place? If you're trying to talk, you've got to unmute yourself. No questions? I have a question, if I may. Yeah. Yes, please. So, Eddie, what do you do with the llamas? Do you sell them? Do you keep them? Do you shear them? What and for whom are you raising them? Thank you. You're welcome. I'll, I'll uh, try and translate. If, Brittany, if you can unmute her. Uh, Eti, uh, se pregunta, ¿qué haces con, con, con las llamitas? Eh, con la lana lo hago los ponchos, eh, guantes, chompas, chalina. Eh, con la carne es para el consumo. Ya. Yeah. She, she said there's two things that she principally uses them for. One is the lana, which is their, their um, fur. Um, she herself will make the... Um, there we go. So she actually herself will make, um, uh, will, will weave ponchos, um, gloves, and different things using um, uh, the llama fur. Um, and then also, uh, when they get older, the llamas are also used for meat traditionally. Uh, it is one of the most common 
uh, sources of protein uh, in the Andes still. Um, but they live, they live a long life and every year they'll shear them uh, once a year usually um, uh, after of course winter. So they've got, the, they've got long coats now because it is winter down here. Uh, and uh, like I said, they also are traditionally used for transport. Um, and of course, uh, traditionally, they were also used for fuel. Can anyone guess maybe what part of the llama or what uh, product the llama provides us for fuel? Methane. Yeah, we're looking at it there. Yeah, yes, those little pellets on the ground. Yeah, so those are actually really commonly, they're burnt. Um, um, it's not as disgusting as it sounds, um, but they are, they are uh, burnt and used for that, um, that purpose. Um, but uh, uh, it's not that common now. Most places have, have gas, um, but it, it is in some of the most remote regions still common. Any other questions, guys? Yeah, I have a question. I'm sorry, I yeah. was a little late getting some no work on our camera. Um, I see their little ear pretties. Are those, what are the ear pretties? Yeah, those are to mark uh, which family they belong to. And you'll see that they're only in some of the bigger animals. Um, and that's because the, the babies will stay with their mothers. Um, but yeah, that, that marks which family they belong to. Um, so Eddie takes her herd out every day as do other people in the village. Um, and so sometimes uh, they get mixed up. Um, and so, so that you know which llama is yours in a pack of 80, you're not gonna remember all their faces sometimes. Uh, so they put those things on their ears uh, with different colors so that they know which family uh, they belong to. So each family has their own colored uh, ear tassel, I guess we'll call it. Any other questions, guys? Erin, why is Eddie's um, favorite uh, llama princess? What is it? Why does she like princess? Uh. That's a good question. Uh, I'll let her answer that. Uh, if Brittany, if you can uh, unmute her quickly. Eti uh, se pregunta, ¿por qué la princesa es tu llamita favorita? Ah, yeah. It's a, it's a matter of production, really. She says that Princess every year has a child, um, and she's already 20 years old, and she still keeps giving ch children. So, <laughs> so she's, she's really happy uh, economically with her, uh, let's say. Uh, every year she, has, she gives birth, um, and she's 20 years old, and you know, almost every year she's given birth. Um, so it's been, it's, 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 she's helped grow the herd. Any other questions for Eddie? I was wondering. Eddie? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I was Go wondering, um, it looks like they supplement the feed there. And uh, if, the, if so, where do they get that, that feed? That's a good question. So actually, uh, it, we just harvested here. Uh, we just harvested like a month or so ago. Um, so what that is, is the, is the, the leftovers, I guess, from, from harvest. Um, they'll grow uh, a lot of potato here. Um, but more than anything, the biggest uh, thing in, that, in this region particularly is quinoa. Um, and I don't know if you know what quinoa looks like, but there's a, there's a long stalk and then on the top of it is, is uh, like the bunches of, 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 of quinoa, kind of like, like oats. Um, and um, um, so they just use that part and the rest of it they'll use for feed. Um, so it's not like, uh, it's, they, they don't usually buy the feed. Um, and in fact, this would have probably just been a, a field that they use for farming and they just left it there and now they're being the llamas here um, to, to feed during winter just after they've uh, harvested. Uh, so good question, yeah. It's not feed that they've brought in, it's, it's feed that's left over from uh, the farming that they do in the region. So Eddie has farms, uh, and this would be one of them. Um, and um, uh, after harvesting, they'll bring the llamas there to, to, to have a meal. Um, and mo to, that's probably the most sorry. common way to, to eat. No, that's all right. That's mo probably the most common way that they'll eat in, in these villages. Uh, and uh, normally uh, in the wild, uh, they'll eat almost anything really uh, that's, that's out and about. Uh, and naturally they stay away from uh, poisonous um, uh, plants. Uh, so if someone else was asking a question, go ahead. Oh yeah, um, I was just wondering how long they usually live for. 15 to 25 years is kind of a normal 
lifespan for llamas. Um, and that's, that's pretty much the same in, in captivity as in the wild. Uh, they do have their wild ancestors are still out and about, and you can still find them in the region. Um, so they're one of the few mammals, uh, domesticated animals, that still live um, um, with, uh, quote unquote, their, their wild ancestors. Um, it's not very common that you'll see them next to villages, but in that region, uh, a bit further away from, from the roads and people, uh, it's quite common to find uh, their wild ancestors out and about. Um, and um, uh, they as well, they're a bit smaller, um, but their fur is a lot finer. Um, and they're a protected animal now. They were almost near extinction, but they're coming back, um, thankfully. Any other I questions? Couple, I have a couple questions. Go for it. Um, one is, um, are there a number of other farms, llama farms in this particular area? And how far is this spot or this the town where Etty lives? Um, how far is, is it from La Paz? Good question. And I'm glad, uh, I'm impressed that you know La Paz. Um, yeah, that's, that's where I am right now. I'm calling you guys from, from La Paz. Okay. Uh, there's, there's, there's the, her, her farm dogs that they help her herd. Um, sorry. So yeah, the, the, there are a lot of, um, llama farms, I guess we wouldn't call them llama farms, uh, here, but it's not like, uh, maybe in, in the States where each person has a plot of land, they are community, there's community land. Um, so this is communal, uh, land that, that, that they're feeding on right now. Um, and so, uh, yeah, different families, a lot of the different families in this, in, in, in this village and in the whole region um, also uh, tend to llamas, um, but they will uh, take them out to communal land uh, for herding, or, or sorry, for uh, feeding. Um, so it's communal land. That, the communal aspect is really uh, strong here. It's not as much uh, the community owns most of the land surrounding uh, the village. Um, and the, it's not like, uh, this is my farm, that's your farm. Uh, not so much. It's definitely happening more and more. It's more and more common. Um, but where Eddie lives, it's still communal, communal land. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of families in the region that, that still, uh, um, uh, uh, have llamas and there's millions, there's millions and millions of llamas uh, in Bolivia. Um, like I said, it's still uh, one of the most common sources of protein for He's going to go after him. No, <laughs> he's still one of the most common sources of protein uh, for all of uh, the Andes. Um, and it is one of the best sources of protein. Um, it's one of the least fatty sources of protein. Um, and in my opinion, it, it is quite good. I know it's kind of gross to talk about it while we're looking at him, but uh, it is it is, it is is quite good. Um, and your second question was how far away is she? She's actually in a quite a remote uh, region. Um, to get to her uh, driving from La Paz, it takes about seven hours. Um, okay. And she's, she's just on, on the northern shore of the salt flats of, of Uyuni. Mm -hmm. um, Uyuni is the biggest town there. Um, and to get to her from Uyuni, it takes about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit longer, depending on, on the conditions. And that's actually crossing the salt flats. Uh, in the rainy season, it takes a, quite a long time. It takes about three hours because you have to go around no, the no. entire salt flats. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Yeah. Um, uh, are the males kept away from the females after they um, have the babies? That's a really good question. Yeah, as they as they are territorial animals, that is something that that you have to worry about sometimes. Um, and actually, what what normally happens is that there is there is one kind of alpha male in in the pack. Um, and what they'll do oftentimes, rather than separate the males and the females, is castrate uh, the babies the babies um, when they're a bit older. Um, the male llamas reach maturity at around just over three years. Uh, and quite like humans, the females mature uh, at an earlier age. Uh, so the females are maturing around two years or so. Um, so what they do is, is um, when they're in captivity like this, often they'll, they'll castrate any uh, young males um, and um, use them just for fur and then eventually for, for meat. Um, but in the wild, it's quite interesting actually how they manage uh, the food sources uh, naturally. Um, there's only one male in a herd in the wild. And that male will only allow enough females to come into his territory as uh, the land can support, as he thinks the land can support. Um, and if uh, one too many enters, he will, he will get rid of her. 
Um, and obviously, if any other male enters, um, they, they can fight for, for dominance of, of the herd. Um, it's not uncommon. But yeah, really good question. So they, they, they all live together, um, but they do castrate the younger ones, um, um, leaving just one or two alphas. Any other quick questions, guys? I have another quick question. Yeah. So tell us uh, what you majored in at WSU and oh, what took you to Bolivia? Did you meet somebody at WSU from Bolivia or just went down there on a whim and loved it or? Yeah, good, good question. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I, I studied history. Uh, I thought I was gonna become a history teacher. Um, and actually when I was, when I was at uh, Wazoo, I, I did a couple trips abroad, uh, study abroad programs. I went first to Italy and then I went to Africa and I just got the bug. I couldn't, I couldn't not travel. Uh, and actually while I was in university, I created a list of 30 things I wanted to do before I turned 30. And one of them was live in every continent uh, except for Antarctica and Oceania. Um, and South America was the last continent. Uh, before here, I was living in Asia for a couple years. And um, I'd heard amazing things about Bolivia uh, from other travelers, um, how authentic it was, how beautiful naturally it was, the culture, the people. Um, and because of that, um, uh, I came down and um, I was only supposed to be here for nine months. I came down as a mountain bike guide and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the place. I fell in love with the nature and the mountains, the people, the culture, and of course the llamas and, uh, and the rest is history. I mean, you know, nine months turned into 12 years pretty quickly. Uh, not something I was expecting. Um, and yeah, since I, I continued studying a bit, um, I, I have an MBA now, uh, and I started some tourism businesses down here. Um, and obviously with, uh, with everything that happened, uh, because of COVID, unfortunately we've had to come become creative about how, how we create income. So this is a way for us to, to create income, uh, for, for, me and the people on our staff, but also for you know people in these communities that that rely on uh, tourism income as well, like Eddie. Um, so yeah, that's that's my my you know quick version of how I got down here. Thanks for the question. You're welcome. Well, guys, it looks like yeah. Go for it. Um, uh, the dogs are they the herd uh, like you do with sheep and cattle? Yeah. The herding dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're 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 herding dogs. They're not uh, as well trained as, as some other herding dogs. They're certainly uh -huh. it's kind of funny to watch them interact, especially with you know because these are a lot bigger than sheep, you know. So so they do fight back. Um, but they're in the field. They're with the uh, llamas um, regularly. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Every time Eddie goes out, she she takes she takes the the dogs. I with see. Her. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Outside of um. Pullman, we've driven there several times, and we see there's a farm off if you're leaving Pullman to the right, and we don't, we're never sure if it's a llama or an alpaca. We're not really great with knowing that, but um, it's just, somebody said it's a guard llama or guard alpaca. Yeah, that's and actually com becoming quite common, um, it, both in North America and in Europe. Um, like I said, llamas are, are quite territorial. Um, and so, uh, and, but they're also herd animals. So they do protect animals that they're with. Um, so, so they oftentimes put them with, with herds of sheep and uh, they act as protectors um, for any natural predators. Here in Bolivia, we do have uh, natural predators, the, the cougar, the puma. Uh, it is, it does still, you can still find it in the mountains here. Um, it's not that common. And of course, when you're up against a herd of 80 llamas, you're not gonna have much luck. Um, so, so that's why they stay together. And um, they can be uh, aggressive um, if, if they have to be. They do bite. Uh, the males especially have, have, can have quite sharp teeth, especially in the wild when they're, when they're, when they're um, uh, domesticated like this, uh, they usually uh, cut them down. Um, but um, um, they, are, they are used as uh, protectors, yeah. Um, just like that, they, they, because they are territorial, they will protect the herds that they're with. Um, so yeah, it's, it's coming quite common and that's a good question. And yeah, these llamas were, were domesticated 6,000 to 7,000 years ago here in Bolivia. Um, and um, like I said, they were used for so many things, transport, um, their, their, uh, for fuel, clothing, leather, all sorts of things, um, but also fertilizer. 
Uh, that's one of the most important things actually that, that, that llamas are still used for. Um, the llama who, uh, like we mentioned before, is used for fuel, but also f fertilizer. As you can see, it's, it's, it's not green at all there, is it? Um, we don't get a lot of rain, we get it in a couple of months. Um, and without fertilizer, it's really hard to grow. Where Eddie is now, it's around 12,000 feet uh, in the mountains, quite high. Um, and because of that, it's really hard, as you can see, the, the baby or the cria taking milk. Uh, and because it's so high, it's quite hard to actually um, grow uh, uh, plants, to grow produce. Um, and so the fertilizer is still, still very, very important um, for being able to grow different uh, products here. Like I said, the most common where Eddie lives is quinoa. And quinoa occurs naturally here. Um, and in the past, uh, before civil the rise of civilization, people went around looking for quinoa. Um, and because of llamas, the domestication, domestication of llamas, they were able to um, um, start growing more food, uh, which meant that more people uh, could be in, in, in towns and that those people didn't have to dedicate themselves only to looking for food. And because of that, uh, because of that, the llamas are actually really uh, an important part of the rise of civilization in the Andes. Without the llamas, we would have never had the Inca civilization. Um, and because of that, uh, they are really, really important, uh, even to this day, uh, for people, I'm looking at the, the baby, e even to this day, they're really, really important for people living in, in the Andes. Like I said, Eddie wouldn't be able to live where she lives uh, if llamas uh, weren't, weren't around, if they weren't so hardy and they, didn't, they weren't able to be so adapted to living in such harsh, harsh conditions. Um, in fact, they're so important here uh, that we call them our silent brothers. <clears throat> and we call them that because only a brother would work so hard and give so much to you uh, without complaint. Um, now, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start asking a bit more uh, for, from my brothers and see if they complain or not. But, but yeah, that's what happens with the llamas here. They just, they just give and give and give. And because of that, they're highly esteemed um, in, in Andean culture um, and still are to this day. Um, they're highly respected animals as well here. Um, um, they are beasts of burden. Um, we use them for for many things. Um, it's not quite like a cow in Hindu, right? They're not they're not uh, uh, holy um, in and of themselves, but they are highly revered still in our cultures here today because they give so much to so many people uh, here in the Andes. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, their hooves are they like horse hooves, or they look a little they're different? Yeah, they're more like um, sheep. They've got two. Eti, ¿nos puede mostrar uh, el pie? So, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but they've got like uh, two parts to their hoof. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a biologist. I don't know uh, how you call it when there's two of them. So maybe someone else uh, in the group does, but they've got two parts. So, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not like a horse. It's, it's more like a sheep. And you can see their their knees as well. They're they're in the back. They actually go. They're bent forward a little bit. Uh, how about their water supply? Oh, that's a yeah. That's a really good question. So llamas are really interesting. They have a really long, long intestine. And actually, um, one of their distant cousins is the camel. Um, um, and, and their, their common ancestor comes from North America, actually. And that common ancestor, parts of them, some of them went across the Bering Strait and became camels, and other ones came south to South America and eventually were domesticated and became llamas. Um, and so because of that, um, um, they're really, really effective at um, um, using the little uh, water that they actually have. Um, and the llamas, um, 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 because of their long intestine, they can actually store water in their long intestine, like a like a camel does in their hump. Llamas will do it in their in their uh, long intestine, so they can go four or five days without drinking water. Oh. It's quite common that they that they do that. That's probably good. Yeah, exactly. Because here there is no water. Um, like you said, there's there's not very much. Where where Eddie lives, luckily there is a stream that runs through her town that comes from uh, a glacier on top of that mountain in the background. And um, because of that, um, she, she, she's able to uh, give them water whenever they want. But they still, even if they have a ton of water, they'll only drink water once every three days or so. So yeah, again, they're hardy creatures. 
and they're some of the only ones that will that will live uh, as well as they do in in the Andes. So then the, dog, the dogs uh, her, are help herd them down to the water supply and yeah they help herd them down at the water supply and to the and to the, where they eat because every night she'll take them back to their coral. Uh, wow. It is quite cold where she lives um, here in the mountains and so they, they sleep huddled together um, in, in a corral. Oh interesting. They're called cloven hoofed animals. There it is, cloven hoofed. Very good. Cloven -hoofed. Yeah. Thank you. And sheep and goats, and that's about it. Well, cattle are cloven hoofed. Cloven. I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down so I know how to respond better. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, they're amazing creatures. All right, guys. So uh, quickly, we'll try and go and visit some another place. We'll say goodbye to Eddie really quick. Eddie, ya nos vamos. Uh, can you, uh, sorry, Brittany, can you just uh, unmute her? Muchas gracias, Eti. Gracias por soportar el frío. Chao. Chao. Chao, chao. Really, really sweet woman. All right, guys, so I'm going to share my screen again and uh, try and take us somewhere else really quickly. So from uh, so from Uyuni, we're gonna jump into another place not far, called uh, Lake Titicaca. It is okay to laugh if you want. Lake Titicaca it is it's a strange name, uh, and it's actually it's a, an indigenous name. It comes from the ancient Aymara language, uh, and it means Puma Rock. Today we'll call it Cougar Rock, right? Uh, or a cougar's rock. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, it's called that because of the shape. I don't know if you can see it. I'll move the camera here a little bit. Everyone can see. Maybe you can see the shape of a puma here. The ear, the head, the claws, maybe the backside, the tail. Yeah. So it looks like a puma or a cougar. Yeah. And it's chasing a rabbit. Uh, for today's purposes, we'll call this a husky. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, it's it's a puma eating a rabbit husky, right? Uh, so that's why it gives its name, Titicaca. It means Puma Rock. That's the ancient uh, Aymaran language that you guys now know how to say, uh, how are you? And here, we're going to visit a place really close to uh, Isla del Sol. That means Sun Island. And Sun Island is, is, is this beautiful little island in the center of uh, uh, this ma amazing lake. And um, this island is where um, um, uh, people say that the, the, in, the Incans say that the sun was actually born. Um, so it is one of the holiest places in all of the Andes. And there's this, this point here is where actually people say the sun was born. There's a big rock here. And Viracocha, the creator god of the Andes, said that, hey, sun, come out from, from hiding. And that's how the sun was born. And the sun then had children. And those were the first Inca rulers. And so that's how the Incas ended up ruling by divine right. They're actually children of the sun. Um, and because of that, they are gods in and of themselves. Um, and uh, here, uh, we're going to try and see, hopefully, our friend uh, Martin. Martin uh, lives in uh, Copacabana, which is a really cool place. Uh, and it's the entrance to Sun Island. Um, and Martin, ya estás? So you can see here, there's a small town here and that's where he is at. So we're gonna stop sharing and we can go. And again, we'll try and find Martin. Has he entered yet? Sorry, we've had uh, some internet's been out. We have all sorts of troubles. Uh, ya estás entrando, Martin? Okay, so Martin's entering now. Sorry about the delay there, guys. Has anyone been to Bolivia? Someone mentioned La Paz. I was pretty impressed. Can I get a go Cougs if anyone's been to South America? Yes, I actually lived in Bolivia for a year and a half. I lived in Cochabamba, total opposite, well, close-ish to Titicaca, but yeah. really far from Uyuni, where we were earlier. 
That's awesome. What were you doing there? Uh, I was working as part of a women's community healthcare project. Oh, wow. Yeah, Cochabamba is an awesome place. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. My husband goes to Bolivia periodically for work, so we're watching it to kind of see where he's been spending his time. Well, next time you have to come down with him. Send him, send him my contact. We'd love to uh, <laughs> grab a meal or something next time he comes he, down. He mostly goes to La Paz, so I'll yeah. send him your way. Yeah, that's where I live, so happy to, uh, happy to uh, go out and have a beer or a dinner. That'd be great. Wynn says that her sister lived in Cochabamba as well. Wow. Didn't know there were so many connections to Bolivia. That's awesome. Martin, ya estás? Martin has entered. Um, he's just getting his video going. How far is it from Lake Titicaca to the Colca Canyon in southern Peru? That's a good question. So uh, Lake Titicaca actually borders both Peru and uh, Bolivia. Um, and when you're dri driving from the lake uh, on the Peruvian side uh, mm -hmm. to Coca Canyon, it's about four hours, I think. Um, it's not that far. Um, it's a great a, place to look for Andean condors. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the, one of the places where you can see more uh, condors in, in, in all of the Andes. Um, yeah, it's amazing. And, but those condors you can still see here as well. They're just not as common. Um, but Coca Canyon is beautiful, beautiful. A lot of people are uh, going who, as far as Titicaca. You might as well go into southern Peru and check out the Nazca lines and and all, and then all, and then that, and Bolivia that stuff. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's actually how we get most of our visitors. Actually, they come actually passing by from from Peru. And Peru obviously has you know it's got probably five times as many tourists as we get here in um, uh, Bolivia. Well, I remember the first time I flew into La Paz. Years ago, they invited us that were flying through to Lima to get off the plane while they were on the ground. And oh, really? I wondered why it was so it was so difficult to breathe when I was climbing back up the ramp. But the airport's at about thirteen thousand feet, is it not? Yeah, no, it's super high. Uh, it is. It's the world's uh, highest international airport, uh, and it is. It is. It is quite a shock when you come in. Uh, <laughs> On your on your lungs, uh, yep. and everyone comes in with a headache. Uh, even I do when I go back home and visit, uh, and I come back uh, the first day I'm out. Um, you know, you could definitely feel the altitude. Well, you need yeah, to have your own little thermos of uh, coca tea. Coca, exactly. Yeah, and 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 everyone, you know, if you're wondering, oh, coca, that sounds crazy. Uh, coca is is a traditional thing here. It's really it's commonly used all over uh, Bolivia. Um, Martin. Oh, there we yes, go. Please. Hello. There he is. All right, Hello. guys, so there, we're on the lake. Everyone can see the, the beautiful lake in the background. Uh, this is my friend Martin. Hola, Martin. I'll turn around camera for a moment. Yes. Hello, hello. How are you? Hi, hi. Martin from Bolivia, Copacabana. Hi, hi. How are you? And Martin is at his amazing hotel, and you can see a little bit of it in the background. Uh, he built all this hotel with his own hands. Um, so when you come to uh, La Paz, you definitely have to come to Las, Hola, Las Olas Hotel in Copacabana. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing place with, as you can see behind him, an uh, incredible, incredible view. And that's Lake Titicaca in the background. Uh, it's the world's highest navigable lake. Um, and it is the epicenter of uh, most of Andean uh, civilization. Uh, and it's home to a few uh, amazing uh, animals that Martin has there. Martin, nos puedes mostrar, por favor? Uh, Juan is just bringing them uh, okay. on the side of Calvario, but okay. uh, Juan, I can't see them anymore, so Juan is on the way already with them. Uh, um, okay. If you like, I turn around once more, or maybe I wait yes. until the apacas come, uh, because they were grazing. We have not so much lawn in wintertime in the hotel, they grazed it all, so uh, Juan is bringing them because they had more straw and hay on the hillside. Yep, Juan is here in a moment. Okay, nos puedes mostrar la, can you show us the, the view, please? Yes, 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 I'll turn around, just a moment. You're, you're, you're a beautiful human being, but uh, we, we want to see you. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Here we are, it's the lake. It's a part of Copacabana that we can see. The lake is 3,840 meters high. 
uh, which is over about 12,500 feet. Meters big. Sorry, Darren, please. Oh, sorry, I was just I was just translating meters to feet. Uh, so the lake he says 3,800 meters. It's about 12,500 feet high. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we have four alpacas here, uh, different ages. Um, one mother and the other are the kids. And uh, how do you say they are rather tame? They feed from the hand if if we give them food from the hand. And um, uh, well, maybe just talking about it, they breed every year. They have one, only one, uh, call, you call it a child or what you call it with animals each yeah. year. Uh, ours shared unfortunately only male ones until now. So we hope for following year for, for February for female. And um, they carry like 10 to 11 months. And uh, they have a very intimate, ah, ah, I see them down there already. Juan is just coming in from the bottom gate. Uh, in a moment, he will be up here. He's on our grounds already, but further down. Feel free to go to go meet him, Martin. Does anyone uh, have any questions about Lake Titicaca or the Incas civilization? Like I said, this is where uh, it all came from. This is where it all started. Uh, before the Inca, there was the Tiwanaku, uh, and the Inca actually used the Tiwanaku civilization as the basis of their own civilization. I'm kind of interested in the reed boats that they build and use on the lake, especially out on the uh, floating islands. Yeah, that's a really good uh, question. Yeah, so uh, not here, but around the other side of uh, uh, this in inlet, there are some floating islands. Uh, the floating islands are called Uru. Uh, and like you said, they're, they're made from reeds. The reeds are, are they grow, they're quite common. Uh, in the region and uh, um, families uh, will dedicate themselves to fishing and instead of going out every day uh, to find fish they'll build floating islands um, and um, live on these floating islands so there you go that's a that's a alpaca and they, 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 they have built um, uh, as you mentioned the boats and they've actually built boats in Lake Titicaca taken them to the ocean and then crossed over uh, from South America uh, to Australia and from South America to um, uh, Europe, um, just to prove that it can be done. Um, On TV, so, four hours. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that that was built just uh, half an hour to an hour away from from where Martin is standing now. It was actually built uh, on uh, Lake Titicaca in a traditional uh, way. So these guys, these aren't, these are, they look, they look similar to what we were looking at with Eddie, but these are alpacas. Um, and alpacas are more commonly white. Uh, and that's because they use their fur more. Um, their, fur is, is used, their fur is used for uh, their lana, for their fur. Uh, and obviously when it's white, it means you can, you can uh, dye it. Um, and so, yeah, that's one of them there. Uh, they're a bit smaller, as you can tell. Um, and um, uh, they're not as colorful usually. And there, there we go. This guy, this guy, the brown guy, look at him. Uh, he is part alpaca, part, part llama. Uh, Martin, quieres explicar un poco de ellos? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Further back is the mother of these guys. Sorry, sorry, she's actually in the middle. She is actually in the middle. Um, and uh, how do you say, as you see, they're quite tranquil, they're quite curious. <laughs> That's a nice one. That's a nice one. And uh, since we have only males except the mother, um, you have always a bit the problem of the dominance. Uh, the oldest white one, the one that came first to feed, is the, is the, how do you say, is the dominant one at the moment. And I think he will tame it for a, for a while. Although the brown one could dispute him. Um, uh, these animals have been, uh, as Darren might have told you, I'm not quite sure, very important for Indian culture. Uh, basically, the culture was really built on it. In, in terms of food, they would provide the, 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 the local people with their meat. They would provide the local people with their fur for making the clothes. They would carry what needed to be carried, like more the llamas, which are the bigger brothers, basically. The llamas and alpacas can...
No, looks like he's cut out a little bit. Um, and actually, what he was mentioning there, the, these llama trains for transport. So where Eddie was living, they would take hundreds of llamas you. with salt and bring them to Copacabana uh, and for trade. Sorry, Martin, you cut out a little bit. Um, and so, so these huge tra trains of hundreds Sorry. of llamas would 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 transport uh, salt from where Eddie lives to where to where they are now. Uh, and this is about three hours north of of where um, Eddie was. Or sorry, three hours north of La Paz, which is again six hours south of where uh, Eddie lives. Or oh, La Paz. Sorry, Martin, you cut out. Continue, please. I thought it was Angela calling me. That's why I answered. It looked the same number. I'm sorry about that. That's right. I'm sorry about out. that for the interruption. Uh, it looked look the same number that I had before six eight or something when she was calling me. Uh, um, yeah, as I said, unlike horses and donkeys, uh, these guys can produce or can have fer fertile uh, uh, babies that again can reproduce. So they're not so far away. Alpacas and llamas is kind of uh, still, still the same uh, kind of animal in a way. And, and all uh, of these, they, they, they look more like alpacas, uh, but they will have a little bit of both blood in them. Yes, yes, they are not the. Uh, they're, they're, they're Wairisos, so as people say here, that means they're mixed breed. They're not, the, they're not entirely alpacas, they're mixed breed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, Guys, it looks like we, we, we're, we're at the hour mark, so um, uh, I don't want to eat up everyone's afternoon. Um, but if anyone has any other questions, we're happy to um, answer them for you. Um, is there any other questions? I do have one more bad dad joke, if anyone wants to hear that. What's a llama's favorite American president? Barack Oyama. Hmm? <laughs> Barack Oyama. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> Appreciate ah, that. That was a short one. That was a short one. With pleasure. With pleasure. I think... <laughs> uh... does, does anyone have any other questions? How well, long has what other that, animal? Sorry, how sorry. Long, how long has that area been? Um, has there been people living there? How many mm. thousands of years do you suppose? They they think that this region started to get inhabited around five thousand to four thousand uh, BC. Ah. Maybe even before that. There there are there have been some smaller. Uh, communities that have been found uh, on the coastline of Chile uh, that would suggest that even longer. What are the alpacas mixed with here? I, I, I didn't quite catch that. Uh, uh, with llamas. Uh, with alpacas, llamas. With llamas. Alpacas and llamas and their wild cousins, the vicuña and guanaco, can all uh, mix. They can all still have offspring that are fertile. Um, and so these, these guys are called uh, waraco. Um, and so they're they're um, um, a mix between an alpaca and a llama. And the alpacas are worth a bit more, strangely, uh, because fur is worth more. Um, and so they're they're a bit they cost a little bit more than a llama costs. It, probably for the fur, I yeah. think. Well, meat you can have from both of them equally. Um, but the fur is more appreciated from the alpacas. It's a, a, a very gentle, one of the finest uh, fibers in the world, the alpacas give. So they are very good for jumpers, for, for any wool and article. Any other quick questions, guys? Uh, do they milk these animals? No, that's a good question. I've been trying to look for llama milk just because I wanted to try it, <laughs> but no, uh, it's it's not it's not uh, common. No, they they don't make cheese or milk from them. Um, but I've I've been wanting to try. It. Martin, have have you ever tried llama milk? No, no, and I've <laughs> never heard about it either. That there would yeah. be milk. I've never heard about it. Um, no, I think that is the one not... thing they don't give. They give yeah. fur. They give meat. Uh, they give the fertilizer. Their dung. Uh, but uh, really? I don't <laughs> think really there's a tradition of milking the metal. I have not heard about it ever. Yeah, they don't, they don't make llama milk. They don't make llama cheese. Um, it's not common. But it's a niche. We're looking into it. 
<laughs> yeah, it's you guys. When you ask questions, you always help us to to update, to learn more about it. But uh, I think we would have known, Darren. I think we would have heard about it. Yeah, we would have. Uh, yeah, I. I, I <laughs> so. uh, Brittany, maybe what we can do real quick is instead of uh, pinning Martin, if we can get everyone on here, and maybe everyone, if you can put your camera on, and we can try and take a quick picture. Uh, uh, so, shall I turn around? You mean that, uh, that I get the image that you no, give me? No, 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 Martin. If we can, if we can look, if we can get a llama on our Zoom, that's what we're what we're trying for. And what do I have to do for that? Sorry? Just, just, just show the llama. You just show the llama, uh, Martin. Okay, give me a second. And Brittany, if you can, there we are. There we are. him. On what? Oh, sorry. Uh, from gallery view, everyone's got their camera on. If you want, you can get your llama fingers out too, so that the llamas aren't alone. Martin, if you can get a bit closer and we can get a llama face, that would be awesome. That's my favorite picture of, of the day always. Oh, looks like it's freezing, unfortunately. Everyone put their cameras on, and obviously. <laughs> the internet dies. So we'll try we'll try it now, okay? On the count of three, everyone smile. Okay, or with one. Yes. Is that okay? Yeah, that's perfect. All right, everyone say llama love on one, two, three. Llama love. Llama love. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna go to the next. There's, there's another whole nother group of people here. Okay. One, two, three, llama love. Llama right. love. Llama love. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey guys, uh, thank you very much for, for sharing your afternoon with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, you know, like we like we mentioned, you know, we we were really been affected by by tourism, uh, by the lack of tourism now here. And this is a way for us to share our passion and our love for this country, the llamas, uh, with the world. So we really appreciate your time. We really appreciate that you're with us. Thank you, Brittany and the WCU Alumni Association for for having us, we really, really appreciate it. If anyone uh, wants, again, we're available to be contracted uh, for uh, any event that you might have. You know, someone, someone's got a birthday. Uh, we've even done graduations recently. Um, whatever it is that you want, uh, we're happy to put a llama on your Zoom um, and share a bit of our passion. So, uh, well, thank we're you. looking forward to having llama cheese at Ferdinand's. <laughs> <laughs> we'll produce some, some for you. We'll try. We'll try. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll look into it. We'll, I'll be contacting you uh, in a in 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 a couple of months, Judy. We've got a bit of time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to all of uh, you. Thanks to all of you for your interest. Thank yeah, you, no, uh, thank you. We really thank we really you. appreciate it. If you guys if you guys uh, get a chance, please get on to our Facebook or or Instagram or social media. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Tell your friends about us. Uh, if you'd like to to give a tip, you can also do that from PayPal, uh, yamami at callayama dot com, uh, or Venmo. It's uh, at Red Cap Tours, Red Cap Tours, if you want. Uh, and if you want to contact us, we're at calllama.com. Again, thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate it. Go Kooks! <laughs> and, Karen, uh, thank you. 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 Bye, guys. Cool. Thank, thank you. Bye. Go bye, bye. Darren, can you tell us the Venmo um, name again, please? Yeah, at Red Cap Tours. Thank you. Thank you again. Kevin. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, man? Bye. I'm good. Kevin, Kevin and I graduated together. I saw Chuck and Nick were also on the call at times. Yeah, I saw that. How you been? Good. You see my video? Yeah, I can see you. Hanging out at Lake, Lake Coco Lala. Oh, that's a good gig if you can get it. Yeah. Well, this, uh, we should try and connect uh, if you've got some time on uh, Facebook. Have a quick chat. Absolutely. I'm going to sign off for now. Thanks for the right. virtual tour. Yeah, I hope you liked it. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Darren. I'm going to send out an email to everyone that participated, and I'll, I'll put all of your guys' information to as well so they can add you guys on Facebook and do all that stuff if they want to contact you. Anyhow, thank you very much, Brittany. Thank we really you. appreciate it. Like I said, 
this is uh, this is great for us. So thank you so yeah. much, and thank thank thanks everyone at the association. Okay. Well, bye, Darren. Ciao.